So these age structure pyramids can give an indication of the direction a country is heading. This one that ha Afghanistan has shows a population that's going to grow quite a bit or has the potential to grow quite a bit because of all these um, individuals who have yet to reach their reproductive years. The U.S. shows a more stable growth pyramid and Italy shows one that's sort of in decline because of that tapering off at the bottom. Um, so there are various ways of looking at the health, uh, overall health of a population and infant mortality is a good indicator um, when you have um, relatively low infant mortality that's a good indicator of uh, general state of being there and if you have high infant mortality um, that's not so good it's usually measured on um, what's called the crude uh, birth rate and that's the death the I'm sorry this shows the actual death rate not the birth rate um, yeah, oh, sorry, infant mortality rate. So it's showing the deaths per thousand. So of the thousand babies that are born, wealthier developed countries tend to have very low numbers in the single digits, whereas countries like Afghanistan or other developing countries where health care is not nearly as good can have much higher infant mortality rate. Um, and as you might expect, life expectancy goes with this as well. If you have a more developed country, um, with well, a better healthcare system, all you'll tend to have about longer lifespans than in a less developed country. <coughs> What's the world, the Earth's carrying capacity for people? No one really knows for sure. Um, perhaps some would say we've had over 7 billion people, we may have even exceeded it already. I guess we'll see. Um, now, at this point in the book, they also veer into some more environmental, environmental science type things. and particularly speaking of what's called the ecological footprint. And this is the idea of how many resources do does one use, does a country use. Um, and so this sort of looks at all of the resources you use, the amount of land it takes to support you and grow all the food for you and provide other resources, the amount of water that you need. Um, and countries vary a great deal in terms of their ecological footprint. And so <clears throat> you can see here's the, the footprint per person, hectares per person. You can see the United States way up there. We use a lot of resources um, to support the typical American. Um, and this talks about the capacity of that country to supply those resources. And so you can see we're on the upper side of this line. In the red, you might say, in that we're using resources at a greater rate than or to a greater degree than can be supplied by our own country and so therefore we tend to import a lot of stuff. Um, some of these countries, New Zealand has a really high ecological footprint but they have a much smaller population than us and so they're able to essentially you might say support themselves. You can see overall the world is slightly in balance where the average ecological footprint somewhat exceeds the ability of the world to support those that lifestyle. <coughs> um, so some would say we're on globally on a trajectory towards eventual decline because we're using resources faster than they can be uh, supplied by the earth and um, not living in a sustainable fashion. Um, that might be the case very well. It's things we talk about in environmental science classes. <coughs> Uh, this number is a little dated, and we're now over 7 billion people. Um, so we'll see what happens. That's it for Chapter 53.